in this video, we were talking all about SWOT analysis, what it is used for, the various elements and considerations of building a SWOT diagram, how to get started doing it. SWOT analysis is key part of any business and strategic plan. SWOT stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Strengths and weaknesses are internal factors, and opportunities and threats are external factors. A SWOT diagram analyzes project or business venture by focusing on each of these factors. It typically consists of four boxes, one for each area, but the exact shape may vary depending on the design. SWOT diagrams can be especially useful when trying to decide whether or not to embark on a certain venture or strategy by visualizing the pros and cons, uh, by clearly outlining all positives and negatives of a project. SWOT analysis makes it easier to decide how to move forward. Uh, first is you want to figure out on saan pag-build on the strengths of your organization. Ang SWOT analysis will help you identify the parts of your business that are doing well. Mauni ang imong critical success factors aspects sa imong business that are strong and give you a competitive advantage. Recognizing these assets, makatabang ni mo para makakontinue ka on at a high level and manginahanglan put ka to find ways to leverage and build upon sa kaninga strengths para mo grow imo ang business. Next, you will want to identify ways to improve on your weaknesses. Weaknesses, mauni siya ang factors that put you at a disadvantage to your competitors. Figuring out what these weaknesses are and taking actions to listen them before they hurt your business is essential. Kaninga stage requires a detailed and candid analysis of what is going wrong within sa imong organization. Now, you will try to identify the opportunities available for your business. Try to pinpoint openings in the marketplace na makatake ni mo advantage to help your business grow. Kaning opportunities are caused by external factors such as market fluctuations and trends. Always a consider among strengths and weaknesses when assessing these opportunities. Delita ng opportunity is right for your company at the moment but it may be not too far down the line. And now, we will try to figure out how to respond to threats to your business, market fluctuations, government regulation, or public perception are all external factors that may affect your business in a negative way. By identifying any threats and finding ways na malisten or eliminate them, you are clearing the way for smoother sailing as with opportunities you need to consider your strengths and weaknesses when assessing threats. Importante man good to note that a strength for one part of your organization might be a weakness sa uban. For instance, ang old-fashioned nya brand image and 100-year-old history of a company may benefit the farm equipment division but it may not be such a boom for the new tech division. Sa kaninga reason, you may want to perform a different food analysis for each part of your business rather than for the business as a whole. Also, you will very likely to have the same factors listed in more than one of these categories. You can see how a company's weakness, for example, its lack of presence in a marketplace could also be a major opportunity going forward. Here are some things to keep in mind while doing a SWOT analysis. Try to keep your SWOT diagram brief into the point. Include the most pertinent details but don't bag it down with too much explanation within sa diagram. You can go into greater detail during meetings or in reports. Be sure to utilize employees from various areas of your company when getting input during your analysis. Consider feedback from your partners and customers as well. 
a variety of perspectives will result in a more thorough analysis. Keep the core objectives of the company's business plan in mind while performing your SWOT analysis. Makatabang ni Nemo na mag-guide ka through seemingly unrelated internal and external factors. Arrange the results of your analysis in order of the most important factors to the least. This will help you uh, prioritize action points going forward. With all that in mind, let's look at how you build a SWOT diagram. First, determine nimo ang objective. Decide on a key project or strategy to analyze and isuwat na nimo sa top of the page. Next, create a grid, draw a large uh, square, and then divide it into four smaller nga squares. Kung gagamit ka og diagramming nga program, the templates already do this for you. Ang imo nalang buhaton is mag-type na lang ka sa spaces. The boxes, of course, should be labeled. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. These are titles so they should be distinguished from the rest of the text using either color or font size. Add the factors that affect the project to the applicable boxes. Factors are typically listed in bullet form. Continue adding, removing, or editing the factors as you go through your process. That's all there is to it. Now, draw your conclusion by analyzing the finished shoot diagram. Be sure na imo in note if the positive outcomes outweigh the negative. If they do, it may be a good decision to carry out the objective. If they do not, Adjustment may need to be made or certain objectives may need to be abandoned. Be sure to keep your SWOT analysis in an easy to access place for future reference and discussion. Some managers may want to keep an ongoing SWOT analysis, updating the diagram on a regular basis. Others may prefer to revise the analysis quarterly or yearly. Either way, it should not be left stagnant for long. I hope kamong tanan enjoyed learning about sa kaning ako presentation nga SWOT analysis. Ang kaning video di ay is gihimo sa smart draw. So karon, uh, diri nata sa example of SWOT analysis. Okay, uh, karon, we will use the SWOT framework para i-analyze ang Tesla and i-organize atong thoughts about sa kaninga company. Uh, hopefully, a 360 degree analysis of its strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. We will improve our idea about the firm's future outlook. Tesla was founded in 2003 and is on the mission na mahimo silang first successful nga pure electric vehicle producer sa tibok kalibutan. Also, it aims to be one of two U.S. auto producers that have not filed for bankruptcy, the other one being Ford. Magsugod ta sa company's strengths. So, first of all, everyone has heard of Tesla, right? So, it definitely has strong brand recognition. Actually, Tesla uh, is the most recognized electric car producer in the world. Uh, quite advantage with respect to other companies that are about to enter the industry. Moreover, uh, many customers appreciate Tesla's innovator's spirit and the fact that it is the first mover in the automotive industry. Uh, such originality, coupled with aesthetically pleasing design and positive customer's experience with the product justify Tesla's premium pricing and choice of different uh, shaded uh, competitive strategy. Elon Musk, Tesla's notorious CEO and the major shareholder, so isa siya sa most famous and appealing businessman around the world. Ang iyong ability na motel og story and the involved ang public is unmatched. By doing this, he wins over many people who actively follow his businesses and will likely na mahimong customers. 
na maoy importante. Uh, such customers can be very loyal if i handle lang correctly, uh, which is priceless in the long run. Tesla is attractive to people because it doesn't simply sell cars. The company sells a story. The story of an organization which is a business with an ideal purpose to preserve the global environment. So probably, Mauni ang Tesla's most valuable nga strengths. Along with that, makamention ta og several other important advantages the company has. Ilang cars are head of the competition kung in terms of battery range and experience with battery production and recharging. Tesla has put in motion a plan that would make it the biggest battery producer in the world. Ang company intends to construct several gigafactories, uh, three in the US, one in Europe, and one in Shanghai, resulting in a significant cost advantage against competitors who outsource that battery production. Tesla's autopilot feature has been operational for several years now accumulating more and more data and testing in real life conditions sa future man good murag makita na nato na magdepend jud ta sa autonomous vehicles so tesla's experience with autopilot would be extremely valuable uh, of course uh, we also need to mention the company's supercharger network allowing uh, tesla owners to charge their vehicles for free in the very fast way went on the road and a perfect nga kalibutan so this would do however napuyo magunta sa fossil fuel dominated nga kalibutan so let's consider this last competitive weakness put so number one and quite important so tesla continue to burn cash in 2017 and 2018 ang company has not turned uh, a profit ever since it was founded uh, that's understandable considering that it grew rapidly with the goal of becoming a true global auto producer plenty of investment were made to achieve that negative cash flows are a problem given that tesla stock price is under significant uh, pressure from short sellers who believe the company is overvalued the fact na ang Tesla isn't a traditional mass market car producer <coughs> uh, became of use in late 2017 and 2018 when the company started producing Model 3. Uh, the automatic production line it had constructed didn't function properly and Tesla was unable to reach its target of 5,000 automobile uh, car per week for about a year. Nagpa matuod kini na it can be very hard to make the transition from being a premium sports car producer delivering several thousand cars per month to a mass market company. It is very likely that the company will experience similar challenges when it attempts to realize cost efficiencies and improve margins. Traditional car companies have the advantage that they have been in the business of producing at scale for decades. Tesla is an innovator in its field, but some may feel that Elon Musk's idea to make all of their patents open source was a bit naive and idealistic, endangering the company in the long run as it wouldn't be able to protect its inventions from imitation. The last weakness will add here, uh, I see Elon Musk divided attention so, ang fact na ang Tesla has a CEO who is responsible for four separate billion dollar entities is a bit disturbing. First is, uh, is he going to be able to sustain such workloads in the long run? And second, how much of Elon Musk's time is spent working on Tesla? Besides strengths and weaknesses, we should also consider future opportunities too, right? So let's go ahead and list some possible developments that could help the company succeed in the long run. Uh, 
ang electric car market mao kini ang future of transportation. Bisa kita tanan mo agreement po dana. How fast will the transition to electric vehicles be? Most people disagree on that. So wala ta kay ibaw. Some experts uh, believe it will happen over the next 10 years. Others especially the ones involved uh, with petrol refineries, claim it would take at least 40 years. One thing is certain though, for Tesla, the faster nga ang transition sa electric vehicles, the better. So currently, ang company is well positioned to win a significant nga market share of people switching to electric vehicles in a favorable nga scenario. So this could be great for Tesla as very few of the other uh, automobile producers are ready to compete in the electric vehicles markets at full scale. So that's definitely one opportunity. Another one is that Tesla expanded its product range. Remember because of their merger with Solar City. The company now offers batteries, power walls, and other equipment related to production and storage of renewable energy. A rising demand for a renewable energy could mean more business for Tesla. Furthermore, Tesla's huge industrial batteries will become a very interesting product in line. Uh, in the event of renewable nga energy market, so it continues to grow at this pace if it speeds up even further, so the demand for storage of electricity produced by renewable uh, resources will rise sharply. So, of course, there are some very enticing opportunities ahead of the company in terms of economies of scale. So, increasing of volumes of production and hence uh, lowering the cost of production. Think Model 3, for example. Economies of scope. Uh, producing different types of vehicles will probably be more efficient when the range of products Tesla offers expands and R&D costs can be shared between different models. Another exciting opportunity is factory automation. Elon Musk shared that at some point, the production held the company experience was caused by too much automation and the level of automation of its Model 3 production line had to be reduced. That was a painful nga experience. But now that Tesla has a scar tissue and has cleared a valuable lesson, so it will probably try to build up on what was attempted before. Removing flaws from the automation process, this could result in improved production, volumes, and lower cost, especially in terms of production personnel. Okay, uh, moving forward. So one of the weaknesses we mentioned was that Elon Musk divides his time between several companies. Uh, well, this can be a problem, but also uh, can be highly beneficial in the right circumstances. Elon Musk is involved with firms like SpaceX, The Boring Company, neurotechnology firm, Cunning Neuralink, and non-profit organization, Open AI. At some point, it is highly likely that synergies between these organizations could help Tesla improve its competitive position and know-how providing a valuable advantage against traditional nga auto producers. The last piece of our suit analysis are the threats ahead of the company. As we mentioned, uh, before, the gradual transition to electric vehicles can happen in 10, but it can also happen in 40 or more years in favorable sa scenario. So, slower transition is a significant threat because it strips uh, Tesla from its uh, first mover advantage and puts it in a position to operate in a market that is not growing fast enough. Such a scenario isn't very likely given that most research indicates the electric vehicles market is about to experience tremendous growth over the next several years. Of course, the entry of traditional producers is a significant threat as we discussed. Firms kaparehasan ng BMW, 
Volkswagen, and Daimler will undoubtedly nga mo enter sa market. As Tesla continues to release new models, there is no guarantee nga a production on difficulties would not appear again. So this is another threat. Uh, finally, one has to consider tax incentives for electric nga vehicles that are allowed in the US and around the world. At the moment, uh, can the government subsidize electric vehicles through tax deduction and other similar nga incentives? In the US, for example, automakers are allowed to sell up to 200,000 subsidized vehicles. At the moment, incentives rate of 7,500 per vehicle. Then incentives are have to $3,750 uh, per vehicle and so on. Although, uh, people from the automotive industry have asked for these incentives to be kept intact even after reaching the 200,000 threshold. U.S. politicians seem uh, reluctant to do that. So, this continuing incentives for electric cars is another threat for an electric producer like Kaning Tesla.